What's good, fame lab? So, what rhymes with epilepsy? Pepsi? <laughs> Narcolepsy? Alex, you're looking very sexy. No, yes, no. In the UK, where we've got 500, 600,000 people with epilepsy, that's one in 100, and this IMAX fits 400, so I'm looking for at least four more for my boy band. <laughs> what rhymes with epilepsy is a 76-year-old woman. Yes, now this woman, she presented with seizures after going to the doctor and getting medication for it. She presented with hypographias, that's compulsive, write, uh, consult, convuls, uh, compulsive writing. But she did it in the form of poetry, and no one really knows why. Was it due to the seizures? Was it due to the medication or a mixture of both? Unsure. And that, that case study really sets a story for what we understand about epilepsy. A lot, but not a whole lot. Way in the past, it was seen as the disease of the holy. These people were having seizures and speaking to God, so they were revered. More recently, it's been people who are unclean or invaded by spirits, and so they should be destroyed. What I'm saying is there's a lot of misunderstanding on both sides of the spectrum. But what really is it? Well, I'm going to get explicit. It's a condition meaning that your brain might fire on synchronized rhythms. And you're probably wondering, Alex, why is rhythm bad? You know, people say I need more rhythm in my life. Well. When it comes to the nervous system, one thing is fundamental. It's that every potential action it requires an action potential. Just call it a nerve impulse. But it's just the consequence of neural membrane ion exchange. Because you get a resulting difference that depolarizes and repolarizes your neurons. What? OK. Like a Mexican wave, charge, it falls and rises and then carries on again. Because each of your neurons, it relays an electrical message. And then it gets to rest for like a millisecond. And that could be for anything, from lifting a cup to tapping your head while doing the weird belly rub. But when you're having a seizure, you're not feeling like a winner. Because your brain, it starts firing in patterns like angry, synchronized swimmers. Normally, you're walking and talking. Your brain, neurons are firing off, sort of like random. But when you're having a seizure, clustering starts to pattern. So normally, walking, talking, doing things, it can be described sort of something like but when you're having a seizure, it's hypersynchronous neuronal activity at some point in your brain. So it's more like, and that's what leads to the seizure. It's not really useful information in your body. You just start having a seizure. But what gives you epilepsy? Well, it can be genetic or acquired. I'll start with the former, then I'll move to the latter. It's required. Because sometimes these seizures, they reflect a single gene defect causing neuronal upset, or else it can be more indirect, like a stuntman who hits his head internally bled with no O2 fed, because normally in the UK, uh, one of the reasons is due to stroke or tumors, this brain damage. OK, what leads to seizures? Well, yeah, you're kind of right, but there are other triggers apart from flashing lights, low blood sugar, maybe high stress, or really any imbalance in what's in your head. OK, I've got some time over. I've got some science over, but I've got some time left. There is one more thing I think I need to address. You can say brainstorm. We don't get offended. There is one thing I need. It needs to be appended. If you see someone having a seizure, put them in a recovery position. Just sit and don't stick anything in their mouth. They can't swallow this. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alex.